So this is a video on the disassembly and reassembly of the lock the, of the Vickers machine gun, the breech block. And it's a relatively simple task. There are instructions on the Vickers Machine Gun Collection and Research Association website at www.vickersmachinegun.org.uk but hopefully uh, this visual aid will help understand what different elements of the of the lock are and how they disassemble and reassemble. So you don't need any particular tools to do this. The number five punch which is carried in the spare parts wallet of the Vickers machine gun is what's made to fit in fit the split pins on this but also probably more readily available is the T-piece that holds the rear cross piece of the gun on. You'll notice that on the T-piece there is a dished part to this pin here and that actually resembles the number five punch. So you can put that to one side for a moment. We're going to use the T-piece of the rear cross piece to do this. It's worth noting that this lock is actually a deactivated one so the hole for the firing pin through the extractor is actually welded up and the projection of the firing pin is cut off so that it won't actually strike any rounds or foul the, foul the welding that's in place there. So at the moment this lock is in the fired position and that's the best way to store these so that the, the springs aren't under tension but for the purposes of stripping this down we're going to cock it like so. The springs are then under tension but that's the easiest way in which to start the disassembly. So we're going to take, holding this in our left hand, we're going to take the uh, the punch element and we're just going to put it on the split pins there. Remove that split pin. We're then going to use the other end to push the bush through. And remove the bush. You can feel that there's a little bit of tension there because it is cocked, but we're then going to remove the side levers like so. We're then going to remove the extractor levers. We're going to remove the extractor itself. We're then going to use the punch again to push through the tumbler pin, the trigger pin, sorry. We're going to remove that, but that's then holding the spring back, so cover everything. We can feel that fire. Remove the trigger. Going to remove the tumbler pin, the tumbler, and then we're going to hold down the sear, and backwards will come out the firing pin. The sear itself can be lifted up, and that will come out, and then the lock spring can be taken out. Sometimes that needs a bit of a shake. But there we've got the empty lock casing. So clean it, do whatever you need to do with it, replace any parts. It's worth noting that the extractor also strips down further into three, for, uh, four components. The extractor housing itself, the jib, there's a spring behind that jib, a small leaf spring, and the cover. That's currently under tension because there's no problems with the jib spring, but if that were uh, broken, which is the only the broken component, or these were, um, these may uh, come off as well, then you'd be able to remove it by using the punch against that there. There's no need to remove it at the moment, and in most cases there never will be, certainly not for cleaning or anything like that, it's only when it's a broken part. So we can then start the reassembly. Although the lock spring came out last, it goes in last as well, so put that to one side. Take the lock in your left hand, take the sear, turn it upside down, you can see the pin underneath there that the sear needs to engage with. The mouth of the sear then goes in at an angle, engages with that, and comes down. Taking that in your left hand, holding that down, we can then slide the firing pin in. We can just use the punch to push that through so we get clear line of sight through the hole there, through that hole, and then we can insert the tumbler. The tumbler goes into the into the rear of the firing pin, it goes through, get that line of sight. You can then take the tumbler pin, noticing there's a lug on that side and a hole for it to engage in. So that goes in from the left and goes through. Fit nicely in there. Then the trigger. Now the trigger has a straight edge and a rounded edge. It's the straight edge that goes to the rear. That will engage with the top of the tumbler. 
Not necessary to worry about that at this point, but we just need to get those holes lined up. The, the trigger hole with so that we can put the pin in. We're just going to use the punch to line that up as well. And then this small pin here is the trigger pin that holds in like so. I'm then going to slide the extractor on from the bottom. We're then going to put the left hand extractor lever on. We're going to turn it over. We're going to put the right hand extractor lever on. Turn it back, hold them in your hand like that. We're then going to put the side levers on. That will all then click into place. We're then going to put the, the bush through. We're going to put the split pin through from the other side. And then we're going to get it all into the fired position. So do, it won't go there at the moment, but we're going to pull back the trigger, push down the tumbler, hold down the side levers so the sear engages, and that's now fired. The reason being is we need to make sure that this long edge of the, le uh, of the lock spring engages with the front of the firing pin. It fits in like so. And to do that, we need to push the long edge in first, push this in under a considerable amount of pressure, and it will all fall into place. So there we've got the reassembled lock in the fired position. We can just test it by lifting the side levers, Pushing that up, it will all sit to place. We're then going to use the long edge of the T-piece to fire it. And there we go.